the simple interest earned on a sum of money in 9 years is 2178 if the principal is quadrupled after 5 years then what will be the total interest at the end of 9 years so like i have mentioned if you know how to solve it or if you have understood the question properly then it is just one step one step will give you the answer and it will take about 15 seconds at best not more than that but yeah for me to explain that whole thing it will take a bit of time so just understand what it is given the simple interest earned on a sum of money in 9 years is 2178 simple interest for 9 years is 2178 if the principal is quadrupled after 5 years now what is this what is this word quadrupled here it means it is made 4 times right the principal is made four times after five years after five years so for the first five years the principal is p but after five years the principal is quadrupled so it, it is multiplied by four then what will be the total interest at the end of nine years if there is no change then the interest in nine years is 2178 but with this change what change principal getting quadrupled after five years what will be the interest at the end of nine years is the question so how do we crack this simple see understand you know that the simple interest each year remains the same right if it, it if it were a compound interest case then it would get really complex but here it is about simple interest which is same each year right simple interest does not change simple interest does not change so so i can say that let's, let's assume interest per year is i interest per year is i so basically nine years the interest will be 2178 so i can say nine into i is equals to 2178 as per the question where i is equal to the interest per year right i is the interest per year 9 i equals to 2178 i is the interest per year now what is he asking us to find out he's asking us to find out the interest if the principal is quadrupled after five years see understand that the formula for simple interest is what si equals to ptr by 100 very clearly the interest si is proportional to the principal the principal amount right interest amount is proportional to the principal amount which means as and when the principal increases the simple interest also increases as when the principal decreases simple interest also decreases and it is directly proportional right so if the principal is doubled simple interest gets doubled if the principal is halved the simple interest also gets halved right that's the proportionality if the principal is quadrupled then the interest also gets quadrupled are you able to follow if the principal is quadrupled which means if this is made into four interest will also become into four as simple as that so the idea is this if you break this 9i as 5i plus 4i interest for the first five years interest for the next four years so what happens in the other case if the principal is quadrupled after five years so for the first five years interest will remain 5i only but after five years that means for the remaining four years so he's saying what will be the total interest at the end of nine years at the end of nine years for the remaining four years first five years there was no change but for the remaining four years the principal was quadrupled and like we have understood earlier if the principal is quadrupled then the interest also will get quadrupled so if p becomes 4p interest will also become 4i so in the last four years this 4i will become four times it will become four times Are you getting it so what will be the total interest 5i plus 4i into 4, 4i into 4 is 16i, right? 16i plus 5i, 21i. This 21i is equal to what is the question? And that exactly is what you need to work on, right? So basically the question says 9i is equal to 2178, 21i is equal to what? Cross multiply and you'll get the answer. 9i is 2178, 21i is equal to what? And like I said, if you know what is to be done, if you have understood the question properly, then you will directly do this calculation in the exam. You will just say 9i is 2178, 21i equals to what? Cross multiply. So what will be the value here? Question mark will be equal to, uh, you know, 21i into 2178 upon 9i. 21i into 2178 upon 9i. So i and i anyway gets cancelled. Do the simplification, you will get 5082 as the answer, right? Like, like for example, this 3, uh, 2178 can be taken as 1800 plus 378, 1800 plus 360 plus 18. You're getting it? Mental calculation again. You don't have to put pen on paper, split and merge. So basically, 2178 can be taken as 1800 plus uh, 360 plus 18. Yes or no? 1800 plus 360 is 2160, 2160 plus 18 is 2178. Now, why are we breaking it up as 1800 plus 360 plus 18? Because I want to divide it by 9. And all these are multiples of 9. So I'm trying to kind of split it in terms of multiples of 9. So now if I cancel cancel 2178 by 9, what happens? 9 here goes one time. Here 9 goes 200 times. 
here it goes 40 times and here it goes 2 times. So 200 plus 40 plus 2, 242, 242. So basically this whole cancellation will lead to 242. And the final answer is 242 multiplied by 21. 242 multiplied by 21. 242 multiplied by 21. You're getting it? 242 into 21. And without having to do the complete calculation, I can immediately say option 2, option 3, option 4 and option 5 are wrong. How? Apply unit space method. One number ends in 2, the other number ends in 1. When a number ends in 2, the other number ends in 1, their product has to end with 2. Remember the unit space method, unit space method, the unit digit method, right? When this number ends in 2, the other number ends in 1, the product has to end in 2. Option 2 ends in 0, option 3 ends in 8, option 4 ends in 8, option 5 ends in 8. Since none of these four options are ending in 2, all these are wrong. Option 1 is the only choice we have, hence that's, hence that's the answer. Ha, there could be a possibility that multiple options end in 2. In that case, you'll have to go for the next step, which is do the calculation and find out what the exact answer is. But why in this case? And that's what will help you save time, right? This is called smart method. Getting 242 into 21 on paper or without paper very quickly is not smart. What is smart here is to be able to, you know, understand that if I go for unit space method, four of the options will get cancelled immediately. And this, this, all this should happen in, in like, in, in, in a couple of seconds, right? I mean, you cannot sit there and spend ages to find out whether unit space method works or doesn't work, whether root digit method works or does not work. Should I go for approximation? Should I do exact calculation? We don't have time to do all that, right? You just got to be bang on, right? And that can happen only when you practice, especially practicing on numbers. 242 to 21 is not difficult that way. 242 to 21 is like, you know, 21 can be taken as 20 plus one. 20 plus 1. So 242 into 20 plus 242 into 1. 242 into 10 is 2420. So 242 into 20 will be 4840. 4840 plus 242 will be 5082. All right. So anyway, the answer will be 5082, even if you want to do the full calculation. But why? Why should I waste my time in doing this multiplication? I know that option 1 is the answer. All right. So option 1.